After banning out Bengi in game one of what they thought was going to be Bengi's champion pool, Gragas came in as a first pick. They're already changing now. Kalista, Alistar, so they look towards the bottom lane. Urgot is obviously yep. the first pick they're going for. The side choice as well has to change here. We thought maybe they would try and do something like three jungle bands. That's clearly not the case for EDG right now. The Kalista band honestly does, like you say, prioritize an Urgot first pick because last it time should they had at the least. Trade. It should. Here's the thing about these two teams. It's so hard Rek to predict Sai. exactly what the game plan is. There are certain lane matchups they like into, into champions like maybe an Urgot. You can say, is Rek'Sai going to be the number one pick if it's left open? SKT decides to say, we don't even want to risk your first picking Urgot. Now it's about the junglers, <laughs> who is not Volibear. Yeah, well, with the Azir band, oh, the Cassiopeia yeah, oh, yeah, actually makes Very a lot true. of sense. Very true. On. And also taking the Cassiopeia now. See what they can do on the other side. Like you guys were saying, a lot of the jungle is going to be a focus to the start here as well. Yeah, so Philip has never been the biggest Gragas player. He has shown it a few times this tournament, and that's technically the... I'm not going to call it straight-up counter pick to Rek'Sai, but the matchup a lot of junglers like to take. If you give over Rek'Sai, you take Gragas for yourself, and once you hit level 6, you're more than fine, and you have very, very strong early ganks as well. You just don't... You won't match the damage exactly of the Rex side, but you have other ways of playing around the early game. We have to see if Tillof decides to go for it if Rex side does get locked in for Benki, as expected whenever it's open. He's openly said he's the number one champion yeah. for him. We know what the real choices are for SKT. One loss on Rex side all time, one loss on <laughs> Maokai all time. Oh, that is interesting right there with the Callista ban and the Urgot ban. I don't know why they'd put a high priority on that unless they're thinking of countering what Coral has to do in the top lane a little bit. So we have to look at what else is open for SK Telecom. They have run Lucian Lulu a few times in the LTK. That, Lulu's not banned. Lulu is not banned, and that's a massive pick for SK Telecom normally. Lulu in the mid lane, of course. And then you have Bang, where he becomes a hyper carrying the late game on Lucian because he plays it so well, and you buff him up with Lulu. In the middle. We have to see if that's the option for SK Telecom, because Lulu into Cassiopeia as well, it can turn into a bit of a farm lane, honestly, where you just sit and try and wave play. You won't really have any pressure on the Lulu, but at least you can sit and farm, and then you buff up this AD carry, and we know how good Bang is in these late game team fights. He already has a pentacle so far at MSI, <laughs> with a Lulu supporting him. It, 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 to me, that's the only reason they'd pick Lucian that early, is because they're trying to lock that one down. Uh, knowing that they'd be going with somewhat of a Juggermaw composition. But we've seen Stranger Things. Interesting on the Leona, knowing Wolf and Bengi love that Thrash Rek'Sai to get in the enemy's face, be very chaotic in the jungle and cause problems for clear love. We're going to see what they go with, though. Looks like more protection. Yeah. A little bit disengaged here. May switch for the mid. Okay. They are definitely trying to get this thought through. They now go for the Orianna pick, and Marin will get a rumble so in the top lane. I think the plan for SK Telecom when they had the Lucian was still to run that Lula mid lane, but you can see the way EDG adapted to it and said, okay, you pick Lucian, whenever you do this, we know what kind of comps you build, so we instantly take hard engage on our support, and we take the most tanky top lane possible, so if you run a single damage dealer in the Lucian, we can have our Maokai target you out and just sit on you in every single team fight, and therefore lock down your main damage dealer. And I think that's why SK Telecom changes up here in the last second for themselves, saying, we need more damage, we cannot just play around Lucian with these pick from EDG. DG coming in already. I love these pick and ban phases to Fischio. Super fun. It, it helps that the players have like Ooh. 10 champions they can play each and they yeah. have so many different combos they can run. The Jinx as well finally making its debut for Deft here at MSI. He had so many quality Jinx games in the LPL. Probably the best Jinx player in that region by far there. And they have a tank line, they have mid lane yeah. time, so two distinct threats, a lot of CC. It's a good pick in this context. And that's a funny way when you watch EDG play Jinx. It's not we're going to kite back and protect death for everything in the world. No, we're going to run forward with our massive tank line. And that should create enough distraction that they can't get to our AD carry. And death can then sit in the back line. He gets the first kill. Yeah. He obviously procs the passive. And then they have so much chase where he can start cleaning up these fights here. So EDG running a very standard comp for them in terms of diving onto the enemy team. We have to see what Clearloff can do on the Gragas. We mentioned how it hasn't been his main pick in the LPO, but it's a good matchup into the Rek'Sai, and that was obviously the plan by giving it over, taking the Cassiopeia first. They were able to use that Gragas to pretty good effect yesterday in their games against AHQ. It was something they did find the win with, so feeling comfortable here as they move in. The, champ the compositions are locked in. 
and Easy Moon taking this Orianna. See if he can uh, outplay what Pawn was doing. I almost feel like SKT got caught a little bit off guard with this Any Market okay. being locked in when they had the Lucian. So they changed it up to the Orianna themselves. Now also going for the Leona for Wolf just because they suddenly realized, oh, we need to be able to get to the Cassiopeia Jinx in order to win fights. We cannot have this where we're just trying to sit and kill the tank line because we don't have one ourselves. Right. The most tanky member is going to be the Rek'Sai with Cinderhawk. I guess that's okay, but that's not going to do anything compared to Braga's Maokai. So they needed to pack a lot of things that can get to the back line instead. And now it's going to be all about, can we get to the Cassiopeia Jinx? Yeah. Blow them up instantly so we win the fights. Otherwise, it's going to be in favor of EDG. Well, in a composition like this, it's a lot easier to hit a Shockwave Rumble Ultimate than a Shockwave Glacial Prison. We'll see what they can be doing here. The teams have been locked in, so head over to Twitter. Let us know who you think will be victorious. Make sure you're tweeting hashtag EDG winner, hashtag SKT win. We'll see what goes on throughout the rest of the game. We'll get those votes tallied up. And we'll see if those Rumble Ultimates can be placed right under the beautiful shockwaves of Easy Hoon as well. Pawn seeing if he can get aggressive here in the mid lane on this Cassiopeia. If he gets a bit of help from Clear Love in the early game. Yeah, mirror matchup from what we saw last time. Yeah. Big thing that happened for SKT last game is Bengi was able to steal the enemy red buff and then get off the successful gank mid. As far as the jungle starts go, they were big powerful pulls to start them off at their buff and accelerate their jungle route. I wonder if we see that again, because at the moment, we're posturing for lane swap wards. Yeah, we do have two very fast early junglers, though, in terms of clear where Sijuani was a little bit slower, and that's what SK Telecom used to catch him on that red buff. EDG has done this a few times, where they don't show anyone except for Koro near this tri-bush here, so they try and say, oh, it's just the top laner walking in toward, and then suddenly mm -hmm. the rest of EDG walk down from the top side where you won't see them. They're hiding behind the wall here. Marin is only gonna spot Koro, decides just to back away, don't even risk anything. Didn't place a ward though, he should have. Oh, he gone. actually risked it coming yeah. back. But should have placed that ward instantly. Unpunished. Let that be a lesson. If you see the enemy at level one, even just one guy, randomly walk into a tri-bush in your jungle, more people are most likely coming. Just place your ward and back away. Don't risk anything at level one. Good note. Note to self, remember what the Fischio said. See if they keep going as well. SKT looks like they're going to play a little bit of Ring Around the Rosie here with EDG, and they're not even, I believe, aware they're still deep in the jungle. Yeah, there's a chance we'll see a That's little a bit of conflict right here. This is the danger of five men invading sometimes against an Annie, but they know the stun. They swap sides. Is up. Oh, that's going to be the flash coming out of Bang, so he can get into position. Wolf very low in this one. It's a get excited that Deft is looking for here. If that happens, oh this is going to be God. very bad. There's one passive for him. He's going for more. Easy Hoon could go down now to Pawn. Another hit up for Deft. Three and kills. It's actually, three kills across the board. Pawn, Deft, and Mako. EDG I had so much AoE damage, and Annie at level one with the stun is so, so strong. I just don't understand why SKT would loop back to take that fight. They have Flame Spitter. Orianna is not very strong at level one. Neither is Leona. You need levels on these champions. But all the AoE that EDG can bring at level one. Right. Through the Arcane Smash from Maokai, the Body Slam, the Noxious Blast from Cassiopeia. Literally every champion that is on the EDG side Maybe save for Rek'Sai, but this Gragas equalizes is better for EDG. So a 5v5 like that goes how it's supposed to and starts EDG out with a massive lead. Massive lead, and they get matched up in the lane now against Wolf and Bang. Definitely keeping them off a bit of farm here. You're going to see a few CS miss. We'll see how aggressive Wolf gets, but it's not going to be anytime soon. He needs to hit two first. And every single flash used from SKT on their side here. Normally, Clearlop is very good at adapting early on. If you see someone playing aggressive in lane with no flash, he will adjust his jungle pathing and he will go for one of these early ganks. Top lane is going to be pushed all the way into tower, so that's not really going to be an option. But a rumble with no flash against the Maokai, that's a very easy gank to pull off for a jungler. So he can start moving down towards it. We can even see Marin moving into the mid lane. Yeah, at this, point, at this point, they're just hoping to get Easy Hoon ahead. Pawn was playing very aggressively out here. Marin, he couldn't push oh. up in his lane, so why not push up mid? First Harpoon missed, but they're still able to come up with the kill. Very nicely done. Easy Hoon getting ahead on that Orianna. 
I mean, it's just a great roam by Marn. He knew that it was dangerous in his lane, so why not go and try and make a play? And he also knew all the summoner spells were burned from the level one on both sides, and it's actually SKT who takes the biggest advantage of those blown summoner spells. Kill actually going to Marin. Thought it went to Easy Hoon, so he's actually still getting just an assist there to the kill that Pawn got in the early fight in this game. Three to one as SKT tries to repair a little bit and stop the bleeding from that early game hit. EDG definitely on par with their kill a minute here if they keep going for game two. That's where SKT kind of faltered against Fnatic, but that's also where they learned about that aggressive gameplay in the early, early game. Should have been, yeah. We did see them try and counter gang EDG a few times in the last game, and it played mm -hmm. off, right. honestly. They right. were predicting where they were sending different guys, and they were ready for it. Early pink wall down this bottom lane in the tri-bush. Of course, Marion still no flash in his rumble. And we might not just have clear up. We can have even Mako join in as well. Marion, my there friend. They go. You're dead. <laughs> very, very dead indeed. Gets knocked up against the wall. EDG, they don't care about percentages. They care about the kills. And they, care, they care about opportunistic plays as well. That yeah. was an opportunity. They missed out a little bit when Marn was able to get the roam in the mid lane, but they knew he was going to be back eventually, and they just went right for it, knowing that it would work. And because Lilov already started at his own blue buff, and Bengi hasn't been down to this bottom side of the map. They get a second one for themselves. Now, the buffs are not that important in the early game in terms of XP. The camps are better, but it does mean you have to time on it. You're going to delay it a little bit for easy one with the next spawn because it was taking at five minutes. So once you give it over to the Cassiopeia, you can have like two minutes time, mm -hmm. but you have blue buff on your mid lane and you can play super, super aggressive. By that time, Clearlove should hit level six on Braggers as well and be ready to challenge Benki in these fights here around the mid lane. Ooh. There are a lot of people on SKT. Notice how Marin is abandoning his lane a little bit because it is frozen on the other side. And Def came very yeah. close to actually walking up to that turret, but is instead waiting for his support. It won't be enough, though. Whoa. Still going up for the turret. They did not expect that much of a party from SKT to come to the top lane. Def, he is definitely going down as they micro in and out on that turret aggro. Very nicely done by SKT. They set that in motion. Few seconds, or a few minutes ago, I should say. Well, the crazy thing here is nobody's doing the expected. I mean, Mari with the first gang to the mid lane, just roaming from his own lane now, because he already he had, he had no flash, obviously, from the bottom lane. He yeah. died down there. He just walks to the top lane. Four men dives on EDG. So everyone here is trying to pull plays to surprise the other team. They've been getting a lot of kills for it. EDG will get a dragon for themselves, but death. Had to blow. Oh, he's healed though, and now Marin, he still has no flash for a few seconds. Oh, again, Marin actually just teleported back down to the bottom lane. Pays for it with his life on that one, and EG starting to get a nice lead here. Comfort champions all around for them as well, coming out of picks and bans. Yeah, it's mainly Marin just being heavily punished. The opportunistic fact that he has his flash down again and again, then the fact that Pawn doesn't necessarily win a mid lane matchup, so instead he's trying to get it back with kills. They're feeding on Marin a little bit. Yeah. As we've just seen a lot of unexpected moves, this one Marin should have predicted because you just dive four members on the top side. You even saw the dragon go down, so you know there's multiple members on the bottom side from EDG. Right. And you teleport down with no flash and ends up dying for it. So that was a big mistake from him. Two supports might find each other. Pink Wards. Fight. Wolf is winning at first. Get stunned. Oh. Ah, he's got it, he got it. SKT always collapsed very well in these situations. It's gonna be close. Mako gets a little help from Pawn there, just in positional aggression. He doesn't need to do too much other than walk that way. And they get out safely. So the ward's already something that both teams are almost going full fights over. And, and it's, a pretty, it's a pretty important ward battle there, too, because in yeah. order to have control of that river, it allows Marn to go top again and again, since he can't exist on the bottom side. They're trading points of strength there on this map. Yeah, this uh, move worked the first time. Marin died in the bottom and went up, <laughs> got two kills. Now he was spotted by Death. We'll still be able to take the tower if he wants it down. I'll be able to four members ah. down the bottom lane. I mean, Koro. They gave all the gold to Marin there, too, as far as local experience. So they're trying to get him back in the game to get some humble items scaling up. They're trying also to hit the next dragon spawn with the fact that you want to have double magic penetration on your rumble. When that hits, he should have at least Horning guys completed for that fight. And that's obviously what SKT wanted to oh. do. Of course, well, but now... Mako's got the cues going on. Oh, the choppers don't hit. Thought the choppers would keep him in range. The one step causes the cask to eject him from the fight possibility. 
and they're not going to get anything out of uh, aggression in the top lane. So Marin does soak up some CS for his troubles of dying in the bot, not really being able to come back in the game there. Hopefully he can get a few more for the team's sake. Already a thousand gold ahead here for EDG. Looks like they're starting to go ahead and over towards his top side of the map slash middle now as we see Coral coming up. Outside of just the gold and the fact that these guys have been surprising each other, the fact that Marin has spent such a long time walking across the map with the burn teleport, yeah. the overall experience in this game is heavily in the favor of EDG. Coral's got two levels on Marin. Wolf is still a level three support versus five for Mako and that will be incredibly important come the next dragon fight, or even as they continue to deny experience. One after the other, Bengi coming in, a very nice play, gets the sonar on a lot of feet coming at Marn, and he knows to get out right quick. This top turret should go down quickly to answer for the bottom here, as there's no real dragon to go after, and I think EDG is gonna look for kills before they get this. This may be one of those times they go too deep here. Well, let's see, Oro jumping onto Bengi. Yeah. Flash is out. Coral's going to want to leave that one alone for now. It looks like they do just have Def back at the turret. They don't go too hard on this one, playing it safe, but getting the advantages that they need inside the jungle of SKT. So if EDG, having all five players on the top side of the map, SKT has already gotten bot lane tower. Now they just go for this mid lane oh as boy. well. At least see if they can force a teleport bang to get out of there. Oh, right that's in. it from Easy. Or Pawn, rather, over Easy's ultimate. He could go down, though. Clear Love puts himself as the meat shield in between the culling. They don't have numbers Ooh, in this you? fight. Oh, no! It shot it back towards Pawn. Bang easily picks that one up. And two kills coming in now for SKT. And EDG is slowly losing control of where SKT is sending all their champions. After this bot lane tower went down, we saw Wolf and Bang move into the jungle. You can see some of the walls placed on the bottom side already and go straight for the dive here ends up getting a few kills more for it they are now even in gold despite losing three guys at level one which is absolutely unreal and it's so hard for edg to keep track of skt because of all the pink wards skt has had edg was just able to clear them out but the damage has kind of been dealt right now we need to track as this moves towards later game whether or not easy Hoon can hit those three item break points on oriana because he is really getting ahead of Pawn thanks to all of this assistance and as well as Easy Hoon being a master. Yeah, let's see what happens here. This is the roam from bottom lane. Instant cleanse from Easy Hoon. Benki is here as well. So it's four players from SKT simply just fighting against only three from EDG and the Rocket, I guess, from Death. Oh, oh no! Down. Catapults them back. Clear love with the yeah. anti-assist right yeah. there on Pawn. But about this Orianna as well in this game compared to the last one, the last one it was an Urga that was the second damage dealer. So that's not really enough damage before you hit that three item spike for the Orianna. Now they have Rumble. Here, they have Rumble, they have Lucian as well, who's a lot stronger in terms of damage, straight up damage dealt in these mid game fights. So they have other ways, even Benki on the Rek side, where you can take fights now in the mid game. We have seen how they try and get gold on Marin. He's got the Horning guys, even start building towards the Pistol Scepter for himself with a lot of magic damage coming from EDG's side outside of the Jinx. So they're ready to contest the next dragon. Depending though on what they have yeah. on the map. Teleport is ready. Yeah, we just got to take a look at the wards and vision control right now. EDG gets a chance for scuttle crab control and they have three sweepers that have already been used so they don't have absolute control over this. They also know that Marn could teleport down. It's actually a bit of a tricky situation for them. If Wolf could somehow get level six, that's the danger right there. He's getting caught up by Coral. If they can take him down. I don't think Wolf is going to be able to get out of this one. EDG get ground. That may make this dragon theirs. The stats will help greatly here as this game has been evened out in gold the whole time. Something they need to start pushing forward. Once, once you get the catch, that's pretty much it. Wolf yep. was trying to get a position because he knew SKT had a good chance in that fight. If they could get a little bit of position, it's just EDG found the opportunity, killed Wolf. They have the timer. Right here, though, they could have gone in and at least applied some pressure on EDG, tried to stop Coral from recalling. He got to just back away and they got the dragon. At least stay around, see if you can keep him there and then have Marin push a bit in on the top side, but decides to just play it super safe. Yeah, point. I think it's safe to say that that was a smart safe play because Mako had flash tibbers up at the time. And if you've ever, like any type of mid game dragon I'll fight, be the man. especially, especially <laughs> since it's been SKT's issue of over contesting dragons that they can't necessarily fight for. Once they lost Wolf, uh, 
they just decided to play it safe. We did get to see though how important it is that you set up dragons before they even spawn in terms of the vision because that allowed them to get in there first, find Wolf well, once yeah. he basically walked in on his own and just catch him out. That secured them. Didn't have to risk taking a fight where Jinx is still going to be a lot weaker here in the early stages. Death obviously really wants to scale up. Definitely a change from last game. A few forward wards really paying off for EDG. They were hardly on SKT's side of the map there, and it's already paying off pre-15 minutes on this one. Seven to five is the kills. Those two dragons over to the side of EDG. They're really hurting that 90% dragon stat for SKT, grabbing the first one. See what Bang can do here to give the bottom turret some breathing room. Farm alarm coming in from Bangy will probably pull them off that turret. And we see clear lock. He does this a lot. If there's a lane where they feel like they can secure a fairly easy tower, he just walks down to this lane here yeah. and he groups up with his AD carry and support and they just power through, take down the tower. SKT once again though is trying to read it. They have Bank in nearby. Teleport for both top laners and now they're going in. Daft with a bit of sun in his eyes, but he's easily able to turn back. Koro now with the teleport in. They're going straight past the turret on this one. Actually goes down along with Wolf on that play. That gets going three, one, and three. Yeah, Wolf got caught in a bad spot once again this game because they wanted to teleport in. They realized they were split up since Bengi had gone over the wall right there. And if Marin would have TP'd in, it's arguable whether they would have just gotten an even worse result. It ends up having to be a Wolf sacrifice there. Definitely a game on par for EDG to get one of those very early Barons here as well with the way they're starting to control this map. It'd be a great game for them to win and an even harder game to lose. Deft on one of his main champions through the season, Mako as well, and Koro on that Maokai. It would definitely be a mental hit if they could not get this game to go cleanly. See now the pressure towards the mid lane as the outer turrets are down. EDG going textbook style as SKT tries to put up the defense. We still have a fair number of ultimates. Nice shockwave! That's two. Koro's the one that's caught. Vengeful Maelstrom is on to mitigate a bit of damage. Right to Mako goes bang, and he hits the ground. Bangy's now the focus of EDG, and they are turning away from the fight. Death completely out of mana, only with the Gatling gun from him. Ultimate already used, and they did not get the damage they wanted out of that. Trading one for one here. SKT pulling the engage as soon as the minion wave went down, so that the tower helping as well. A lot of members low. Koro engage. looking for something. Pop the Righteous Glory. Death is full HP, but he has barely any mana left. Definitely flexing their muscles to keep this mid turret alive. Pawn just a few shots from going down. Clear Love over the wall. The Retribution kill coming in from Clear Love there. Bengi in a bad spot, and now he's in a worse one as he's down on the ground. Marin and Death face to face. Double kill coming in for Death. Clear Love dodges the Zenith blade from under the turret, and mid is theirs. Re-engaging fights is an EDG specialty. They do it again and Again, sometimes you call it greed, sometimes you call it opportunity. This time it was the latter. Five kills now already on the damage. And SKT completely splitting up the damage there in the last fight. EDG looking very strong here. It started out in level one with a fantastic start. Now to get down another tower, they have a goal lead. They got the first two dragons. As long as they keep up the war control, they will be able yeah. to constantly catch out SK Telecom. That was potentially the game-breaking fight at the moment because they had already been up two dragons. SKT was holding on. They came back. They clawed their way to those early turrets and yeah. some nice ganks, but they've given Pawn so much gold now. Sorry, they've given Death so much gold now on the Jinx, and additionally, Korra was able to pick up enough assists that he is so tanky now, and there's so far away from hitting their big item breakpoints to do big time damage. See this one more time. Yeah, this is a re-engage. It's SK Telecom going in at first, trying to get a quick kill. Does get him down, but it's a lot of damage invested. Now, Bang needs to be protected. He cannot take down these two tanks on his own, and Deft is just left fighting now one-on-one -on -one after he gets the first kill on Bang, and he's alone with Marin, and Bang cannot do anything against the Maokai Gragas at that point. It's exactly what we discussed in Champ Select about why EDG plays Jinx. Everyone was in front of him dealing with it. He was therefore protected in the back <laughs> because everyone else was getting dove off. The minigun micro there from Deft was really awesome to take down Marin and then clean up the rest of the fight. And five kills on your late game hyper carry. Yeah means you're basically going to skip your mid game. You're going to go so fast towards the three item spike where you really start shining on this thing. Static Shape is a fantastic item as well. When you pop that passive, you run even faster. So Deft is in a great, great situation for himself. Let's see what happens here on to Easy Hoon. 
rest of the team in position to save him for that. 20 seconds on the Dragon. Nice to get the calling out as well. Cleanse on Easy Hoon is also down from an engage there, so they won't have that for this fight. Yeah, and while Jinx is known as the late game hyper carry, I also think that she has this niche of just being a snowball carry. Because even at the moment, Deft will only be on two items. That's not late game hyper carry. But when he is right. this far ahead, that's the type of carry that can then take over and win the game, like well before 30 minutes. Which is why it's kind of such a nice champion for Deft and Very true. in general. She does so well just on one item, yeah. also with the Gatling gun there. Attack speed she gets from that to powerful just with an Infinity Edge. So you definitely agree on that one. And with the way EDG normally plays around it, now you have two late game scaling or snowballing carries for themselves right. where SKT has to basically try and lock down both at the same time. Otherwise, they won't have the tankiness to stay alive long enough. I mean, again, Marin is delaying his hourglass a lot by going for this Abyssal Scepter here. So he can't even play aggressive. It's going to be about his ulti and then he's going to have to dance in and out the fight because he cannot sit there and take damage from death with zero armor at this point. So it's only Benki really sitting in the front line and I mean, Wolf, yeah, you're Leona, you get some tanky stats, but it's nothing compared to the damage EDG can deal. And look at how much time they're spending up here already, walking back and forth, making sure they have the Baron vision that they want. It may even be something they go for quite soon. Infinity Edge, Zeal, Avarice onto Deft right now. Actually teleport towards the mid lane. They're going to keep consistent pressure here. That's Goro. a bit of a force. Yeah, that's a bit of a, it's a Koro move. control four We've there. Seen it before. We've seen it before. Sacrificing the TP for pretty much nothing, though, uh, will delay this because EDG now has to go send Pawn to deal with the wave pushing in the bottom. And it'll give SKT a little bit more time to try and, try and stall this one out. Throughout this entire MSI, SKT has been the team for stalling out games and making things seem like they're not quite over yet. This game does feel a little bit different, however, because of the Casio and Jinx on the side of EDG. They are still too carries who can't really get away if they get locked down. Right. So a well-placed Rumble ulti for Mario. Now he's hit level 11 as well. Got the rank 2 from it. Can really decide a fight for SK Telecom to get to these carries here. But they need to have the proper setup before they can. They need to be able to see where the carry is up before the fight even starts so they can time all these ultis correctly. Because their team is so ulti dependent here. I mean, you got Oriana Shockwave, you have right. Rumble ulti, Leona ulti, all these champions here. If they miss their ultis, they just drop down in terms of their overall value they have in a team fight so, so hard. Thing is, SKT needs to initiate a fight so cleanly because of the fact that they don't have true tanks. We've seen Wolf get caught a little bit out of position. There's no other tanks that can jump in there and fight with him. Bengi's still not there with his Scythe Stone Cinder Hulk. We mentioned how Marin has no armor. Unless they get that equalizer pretty much on top of a Shockwave, it's going to be and done. And look at this. Got to go fast. Talisman of Ascension comes out. Only stopped by the Shockwave, but they still have a Righteous Glory to keep moving forward. EDG says forward is the only option. And once again, in the face of SKT to push them off mid lane, they're going to head for Baron. Just so many ways for EDG to start the fights here. They keep having wards down to spot SK Telecom and they get the engages. Mako on this Annie. It's almost been a must ban in the LPL against him because he's it so good was. at starting yeah. fights. Something we haven't talked about much. It has been so heavily banned and Mako has started the fights here. Here's another one. Gonna be Daft on the front line here. Ball plays from it by Easy, who cannot do much as he pulls it back. The alt is already down and EDG are finding great picks here before this Baron objective. Gonna be Marin down for 20 seconds. Low, Easy Hoon on mana and health, and they're gonna be starting it. Cassio, Jinx, they just destroy Baron. You need the jungle in there, need to deny Bengi. It is a potential steal. They need to really zone Bengi out here. Bengi has smite in just Fear a few love. seconds. He's going in for it. It's 50-50. He oh, got it! Oh my god, he stole it! Clear love could have just bumped him with a belly, considering when it was going down, but it was just too many options. They throw up the 50-50 Baron. Bengi didn't even have to flash to get in there. Great job by Bengi to not draw aggro outside there and get the dash in. But man, EDG's got to do a better job of zoning this out. Pawn had burned all of his mana to deck out, get that Baron low. And then instead of focusing Bengi while he's on the outside or waiting and stopping Baron when it's on 1600 health, yeah. they put it into smite range. Bengi gets it. And that keeps this game from ending. Yeah, buy some more time for SK Telecom. Now Marin is going towards that hour class. So it's going to be fairly delayed for him. Dragon, 1 minute 30. We have to look at the 3 for EDG. The 5 Dragon thing is going to be a big deal in this game. So SK Telecom, 
will be looking to try and fight with this Baron buff around it, try and stop the snowballing yeah. from EDG. Don't think that really happened the way EDG thought. Not the entire team of SKT was there to possibly go down after the Baron was stolen. So they walk away with just Bengi going down and some good wave clear so they can push themselves back out here. Finally, a breathing room for SKT. They're down about 5,000 gold. They're about to hit 37,000. And they need to scrap together a few more turrets to get that map pressure back here. One minute on to Dragon. And we are coming up on at 25 minutes in the game. Jinx, 6, 1, and 7. Got to keep that carry alive for EDG. And EDG is doing a very good job pushing out these lanes here, preventing SK Telecom, Telecom from even moving to this Dragon and start setting up right. all the control they need. Because as we mentioned, they need to have vision on EDG before they can start the fight. Because these ultis are so important for SKT to land. You cannot miss them. You cannot blow them on the wrong target because then you won't win the fight, especially now you are so far behind in terms of items. If you compare the 280 carries here, Deft has already hit late game on this Jinx for himself. So EDG trying to make sure SKT cannot move in safely and set up anything. Dragon is up in 15 seconds. The threat of five dragons is very real. SKT just needs to use this to try to get a positional advantage on the map. I don't think the dragon is the author of them, but because they have the Baron minions, they are posturing out in the mid lane. Rumble will have a TP soon. I'm EDG thinking about barreling in for a fight. Here comes Def now. I was going to say they don't have too much consistent damage to enter this fight with. SKT realize they've overstayed their welcome for the mid lane and have to reposition. Dragon now going to be a thing here. This is number four, so it pressures five. Something SKT has to go after here. They're planning the home guard TP right now. It's coming behind them. All the way back, about second tier turret near the wolf camp. Here he comes, Koro going right for Bang. Relentless Pursuit is used. That's his escape. His flash is down. He's only got summoner heal. Pawn hits a great ultimate from the side as he's not even given a worry about Bengi. Mako now turning back here, and it looks like EDG may not have assessed this fight correctly. A little too spread out. And you're right, Deficio, the carries to keep delivering the damage down. But it looks like EDG thrives in that chaos still. A three for two, and they end up killing Marin left. That's actually a very good fight for SK Telecom, and it displayed the advantages they can have in a fight. Marin ran through Deft with a great equalizer plus Flame Spitter. EDG will probably control this dragon unless Bengi gets off another steal. He's spotted now. A bit of a sap. They don't have the greatest damage for Dragon because those carries did go down. So Koro's got to fight him a little bit, and if Bengi takes the damage off the dragon, the rest of his team could arrive. It looks like he's run out of time, though. This time, EDG plays it very, very safe. Or do it's they? It. He, Bengi's getting a here back comes the back up right now. Koro, he is taking quite a bit of damage. There's not even any <laughs> armor paint coming out right now from Bang, but he's still able to put it out. A few more shots. Clear oh, no. That was damage that was necessary for the fight. Can Jinx get there in time? The kill going down under Clear Love. Another kill for Bang as he picks up a double. Wolf a little too close for comfort here. Death. Oh, gets pawn. Nice alt coming in from Easy Hoon. What chaos Prince. in these fights? Draw says Death, and he takes down Bang. And it's going to be a double kill coming in for Pawn. The two carries stay alive and they thrive in the fight. There's so many small fights here. EDG, they tried to push Bengi away from the Dragon while Clearlove was just gonna finish it. But then suddenly, SK Telecom had respawned. They ran all the way down. We got another big fight. EDG, though, they got the Dragon. They got four now. Let's see it again. So they're yeah. pushing Bengi away. Koro right. will sacrifice himself for it, though. But because Mako and Koro were pushing Bengi away, it left only clear love on the Dragon, so it takes him so long to close in on this. And then SKT knows they have the rest of the backup. Thank goodness that ultimate didn't land from Jinx, because now SKT has continued the chase. But this is where the fight actually gets a little bit crazy. Pawn comes in for health. Terrible ultimate there by Wolf. Yes. Maybe the game changer. Never use your ulti there to try and secure a kill on the enemy support. He was already out of the fight. You need that to lock down. The carries death in the very end. Just stays alive, got a few good crits. EDG still ahead in gold, still ahead in dragons. Oh. We're back towards this Baron in about a minute's time. And then we're back to warding into the enemy jungle. We'll look for 
someone out of position to start the fight for both the teams, honestly. Yeah, and SKT is proving time and time again why they are a great team. They are so good at playing from behind. They win a lot of games from behind. EDG normally just the poster boys for actually being able to close games in the LPL, but they couldn't secure the Baron this time. Now they're either using the next Baron or the fifth Dragon timers to force these potentially game-ending fights. But these fights are getting a little bit too close for comfort. 6,000 gold is pushing that comfort away for SKT. Koro with the teleports. We've seen him come in more than once. One for positional advantage, and then just completely diving in to crush the fights and start it while the team takes at least three or four seconds to get there. I don't know if that's going to work now, Deficio, as you're mentioning. A lot of the summoners are down for EDG. They have to be very careful here if they take any full team fights. One of the reasons EDG can't really go and start sieging on a tower or simply Afraid of the engage that can yeah. come in from SK Telecom if you're stuck around this tower you're trying to take it down. They do have a Jinx though who's gonna melt it. So if EDG does win a fight, they can very quickly push into the base of SK Telecom, but there's still a few out of turns left on the sidelines. There's no split pushing for either team. It's all about big five on five yeah. team fights. And therefore we see so many members to try and fight each other over the wards and the position on the map. Because if you suddenly move too far away from a Baron, it goes down in a few seconds. Talking about that, SK Telecom is a bit far away. EDG already starting yeah. it. Just checking, are you going to come or not? Cassiopeia, Jinx, and Minigun kill this Baron incredibly wow. fast. SKT's trying to make it, but they don't even get in range for that steal. Rumble to Equalizer down, well. down too. Mako, there he goes. Oh, right on the Wolf. They're going to grab the support. That's an easy one. A beautiful ultimate from Easy Hoon. But again, no follow up can come from that. Just deterring EDG from a faster re engage. Bang, Bang. what are you doing, Coro man? One on one here. That's going to be the Righteous Glory popped by him. He activates it so he gets the slow from that Randuin's effect. And now he still has his twisted advance to stay in range. Oh. But it's the Super Mega Death Rocket coming in from Daft right from the mid. SKT staying too far away from the Baron here. They gave up so much ground for EDG to also start it, and we saw the damage they have. Now they're into the base to have that Jinx. These towers, they're down in just a few seconds. Yeah, also, the Equalizer being used to try and steal it just gave EDG so much freedom to continue to take advantages. SKT not cutting their losses in time right there, losing a few members that they didn't necessarily have to. And because of the power of these Baron minions now, EDG looking to push. And I just love, again, the decisiveness decisiveness for EDG when it yeah. comes to Barons. Because even when they started, well, this they see SKT move close to it. <laughs> if they feel like it's a risky way, yeah, this time, I guess, the <laughs> hey, they were still decisive about the felt, last one. They wanted it, If right? they felt it was risky this time, they could still have backed away in time because they had the wards to see SKT coming. And then they just melted down, used it to get inhibitor, open up the map. It's still going to be about team fights, though. We're not going to have anyone split pushing and being the hero. Well, we'll see if there can be a hero coming out here. SKT needs to try very hard. Pretty impressive that EDG can now make SKT, SKT walk to the beat of EDG's drum. After we saw a very low kill first game, EDG's getting exactly what they wanted. The second one, chaos, kills, and a gold lead. Now 31 minutes in. And one minute away from the fifth dragon yes. happening. Uh, we can see there's actually Decent ward coverage from SKT, but they are not in position to defend those wards. This is most likely going to be the fight that could end the game for EDG. And Marin was trying to make a play beforehand. Not the best play. Hatching a ward there as he tries to get in that fight. Deft wanted a piece of it there from the river. And it looks like they're going to have everything in 30 seconds in final form. Yeah, this. Dragon will belong to EDG. I'm not sure if Martin was going to go for play or just trying to hide from a flank and see if they could then use it in the team fight with some sort of surprise factor. In the end, though, it doesn't work for him on this rumble. EDG already pinging out the turrets. Bang doing what he can to at least push topside. Bangy picking up some camps for himself and trying to deny any resources that EDG could still use. But everything's already on their side of the map getting taken down. Second tier goes. That minion wave is going to be pushing up. It might be EDG just going back after this with Aspect of the Dragon to close out the game. Well, I wonder if SK... No, yeah, that's that's definitely Fifth Dragon. I was thinking with yeah. the teleport up for Marin, there's a chance they could contest, but they really decide not to. SKT, now it becomes more important than it has ever been to lock down the carries. Death are... Cap, Elixir on awesome. Pawn, Death sitting on four big items, and... 
really SKT just needs to find a way of controlling a fight of some kind because the precision and aggression of EDG has been keeping SKT yeah. back for the last 20 or so minutes. But with the talisman from Echo here and the fact he upgraded, upgraded his sidestone as well, he doesn't have any kills yet, which is such an important item when you play against supports like Leona who can engage on your carries from, from a long range. There will be two flashes though from EDG to dodge out of that one and then simply just stay in the back while you have these mega tanks in the front. Clearlove and Koro, who's been basically on fire all game long. They've been winning the fights for EDG as well. And look at the item from there, nearly unkillable. And oh totally no. Slowly pushing their way in. Definitely hard hats on here for EDG. They don't want to go too crazy. It is in their blood to do so. <laughs> and they're just going to wait it out. The minion wave is what they will need to pressure onto this turret. You can see the top side already being aggressed on right now by Koro, and they are going to start spreading SKT thin here if they want to yeah. protect the base. Wolf has been using his Solar Flare far too early in multiple fights this game. It's really punished SKT. Now EDG can push with impunity. Looks like we're gonna get a home guard teleport as well, right inside the base from Koro. Dives in and slowed down immediately, but he is causing chaos that SKT has to go and look for. And as they turn around, they get hit in the back of the head by Pawn. That's gonna be the entire team going down. They'll find Marin on the fountain. Oh. He's Sonya's to stay alive. Death's gonna try and do what he can. It's actually the ace coming in as Pawn picks up another one and goes down to the fountain laser valiantly. What a gold lead, what a game. It's all even here at the Midseason Invitational. One to one as EDG are able to take down SKT. 35 minutes in, 31 to 13. That level one for EDG turned out to be massive, but also the pick and ban phase. I honestly think SK Telecom realized that their plan was spotted by EDG. They already picked against it to try and counter this protect bank setup. So they changed up everything. Last pick, Leona for Wolf. We had a horrible game, honestly, on it. Wasn't on point with barely anything. And that really yeah. cost SK Telecom. The adjustment of who EDG was going to be targeting in the ban phase, the Azir ban and the Cassiopeia first pick, pushing Izuhun onto something else and making SKT change their strategy a little bit. And SKT was playing catch up the entire game, both from the pick and ban phase, then from the just Boneheaded move early on, giving up three kills by fighting in their own jungle, 5v5. After that point, they came back decently in the mid-game, but it was ultimately EDG with the high damage team and some really nice plays throughout the mid-game. Such great play coming out. Our first aspect of the Dragon, and why not? It would be needed in the finals against the highest caliber of teams to take them down. Final form there for EDG. They slipped up on the Baron a little bit, but as we said, it was One a little mistake. Un undecisive. They actually yeah. decidedly won it, which was their mistake. That was the thing that gave SK Telecom some time, but the Dragon Control was there from EDG. Close to every single team fight was in their favor as well, so really showed how to use the lead they got, and we really get to see what they can do with these late game carries as well. It's going to be an interesting match. We're already 1-1 one and one here at the Mid-Season Invitational, and now for a deeper dive into Game 2. Let's see.